Okay, potassium is a fun one to talk about because uh, if you have any interest in the cardiovascular system, if you have any interest in, in how the heart works, potassium is a good one to understand, okay? And let's talk about why really quick. Normal level for potassium is 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter, okay? And it's a really tight range, and that, that level is generally accepted uh, basically anywhere you go. Uh, and this might be one that like the NCLEX might test you on, actually, because this is a really essential lab value. So 3.5 to 5.0 is is the level you should really keep in mind. The reason we're going to run it is because we run it to evaluate electrolyte imbalances or cardiac arrhythmias. We also monitor it in patients who are acidotic or who are receiving diuretic therapy. Okay. So potassium, so our, our serum level is just 3.5 to 5.0, but is the most abundant intracellular cation and it plays a, a huge role in the transmission of electrical impulses in the cardiac and, and uh, skeletal muscle. It also plays a role in acid base balance. So let's talk about this really quickly. In, a, in states of acidosis, so in, in states of acidosis, we have an abundance of hydrogen ions in our blood. Okay, so we have all this hydrogen floating around. And what will happen is some of that hydrogen will enter the cell. Okay, because we have so much of it in our blood that some of it's going to go into the cell. And as some of that hydrogen goes into the cell, it's actually going to force potassium out. And so as potassium comes out, you know, we're going to have increase in our in our serum potassium levels. So when your patient has any sort of acidosis, so low pH, right, pH below 7.35, we're going to see an increase in their potassium. And actually, you would expect an increase of about 0.5 in your potassium for every 0.1 decrease in pH, okay? So if your patient was 7.35, we see them go down to 7.25, we would expect an increase in our potassium. Another really interesting thing about potassium is its relationship with insulin. So if we have a really high potassium level, let's say we have a really high serum potassium level, one of the therapies that we can give to try to treat this is actually insulin. Insulin will actually allow potassium to enter the cell. So we have we have hyperkalemia when our potassium is, is 6.0 or whatever. One of the therapies for that is actually insulin, and it can actually bring potassium into the cell, thereby lowering our serum potassium levels. So while acidosis is going to elevate our potassium, insulin is actually going to decrease it. Okay, so that's important to keep in mind. Another thing to really keep in mind with our potassium levels is diuretics. A lot of diuretics are going to lower our potassium level. So they actually have a special class of diuretics, which are the potassium sparing diuretics, it's things like spironolactone, which are going to try to save or maintain our potassium level while also getting rid of the fluids or whatever we are giving the, uh, the diuretic for. What are some things that are going to increase our potassium levels? Things like renal failure, Addison's disease, injury to tissues, diabetes mellitus, ketoacidosis. We talked about these acidotic situations where our patient is going to uh, have elevated potassium infection, dehydration. Remember we talk about with dehydration that as we lower that, that volume of fluid, we're going to see a higher concentration of our electrolytes and burns. Things that are going to cause a decrease in our potassium alkalosis, diarrhea. When we have diarrhea and vomiting, we lose actually a lot of potassium through that, through the vomit or through the diarrhea. Uh, cystic fibrosis, fibrosis and Cushing syndrome are all things that are also going to uh, decrease our potassium level. So really important one to keep in mind. Uh, and we're going to see EKG changes as our patient has hyperkalemia. We're going to see these tall tinted T waves. Uh, and so it's really important is if we see any EKG changes with our patient, it's essential that we go and address the EKG, get an, e get an EKG run, get a, get a potassium level, magnesium level, and see if there's any uh, sort of issues or anything going on with our heart that we need to address. So that is potassium.